looks like participants are just jumping on or logging in. We'll get started in just a minute once we think everybody has been able to access the webinar. Thanks for being here with us. All right. Well, my clock says 602 and we want to respect your time. So we'll go ahead and jump in. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Kate Radford and I serve here in the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement at Clemson University. And I want to officially welcome you to our third Tiger Talk of the summer. Thank you for being on with us. Um, so the focus of today's Tiger Talk is about navigating student life here at Clemson. Um, and we will feature a few Clemson experts whose work focuses on helping your student get plugged into the Clemson community and Clemson campus. So in just a few minutes, we'll have our panelists introduce themselves and then they'll share a bit more about what they do. And then finally, we will have some time for questions and answers at the close of the program. So just a little bit about the question and answer feature here. Um, this is a Zoom webinar, which means audience Videos and microphones have been muted to ensure a high quality experience for everyone. We hope that you are free of any technical issues today, but if we do experience any of them, please be patient with us as we work to resolve those on our end. If you happen to experience any on your end, we will record this session and it will be available for future reference in the Clemson Parent and Family Experience Portal probably early next week. So if you get knocked off the call for any reason, do not worry, you'll be able to access this information later. Um, Today, you can submit questions through the Q&A button, which should be located on your toolbar. Please note that when you ask a question, we can see it on our end, but it won't be in, um, visible to the audience until we answer that question. Um, we do ask that you try to please keep questions relevant to our topic tonight, which again is student involvement here at Clemson. Um, we will do our best to answer all the questions about the topic today, but in the event we don't get to some of them or have to move on for time, we will follow up with you afterwards with answers to those questions. Um, if you have questions that are not about this topic, we are certainly happy to help if you'll just send those questions to cufamilies at clemson.edu. Again, that's cufamilies at clemson.edu. So I want to introduce quickly our presenters. I'm actually going to be your first presenter this evening. So my name again, Kate Radford, serve as the Director of Leadership Education and Development in the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement. Good evening, everybody. I am Dr. Gary Wazer, and I serve as the Assistant Dean of Students and the Director for Fraternity and Sorority Life. Hi, everyone. My name is Rebecca Harkless, and I serve as the, the Director of the Harvey and Lucinda Gantt Multicultural Center. Hello, everyone. My name is Robert Taylor. I am the Director of Programs and Assessment in the Department of Campus Recreation at Clemson. Awesome. So I'll jump in and get us started this evening talking to you a little bit about our Center for Student Leadership and Engagement. So wanted to begin by sharing with you a little bit about our mission statement. So our mission is to help every Clemson student, and I emphasize that every because we really do mean every single Clemson student, 
Our goal is to help every one of them to begin their Clemson experience successfully, to belong and connect to campus, and to become a Clemson leader. So we believe that every Clemson student has the potential to lead, and we strive to prepare every single one of our students to lead with honesty, integrity, and respect, which hopefully you recognize as our core values here at Clemson. Um, so I want to start by telling you a little bit about what I think an engaged experience sounds like in the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement. So these are some quotes from students who participated in our programs within the last year. Um, and we've just pulled a snippet of some of them, but I want to talk to you a little bit about sort of what when we are looking for ways to make our students feel like they belong on campus and to become those Clemson leaders, sort of what we mean. So this first quote comes from a student participant from Tiger Prowl, which if you're not familiar with Tiger Prowl, um, I'll talk about it in a second as a really important, I think, involvement opportunity for students. Um, but Tiger Prowl is our annual organization fair. All of our student organizations or most of our student organizations on campus come out to that event. Um, they are uh, there to table and sort of share who they are with students, um, new students coming to campus. And this was a quote from a participant last year who said, I was able to see how many other leaders are out there in the Clemson community and participating in Tiger Prowl allowed me to make connections with my peers and feel connected to my university, which feels like a second home to me. This is from our Unites program. So again, I'll talk about Unites in a second about sort of what that um, program does, uh, but it is a um, a program that we do every Thursday and Friday night in the Barn Center. That's what this picture is, the Barn Center here on campus. Um, it is an old sheep barn that has been renovated and turned into a programming space. It's really, really cool space that we utilize um, every single week to do free programs for students. Um, any student is welcome to participate. We do things um, anywhere from open mic nights to uh, craft nights to a smash room, all kinds of fun events throughout the year just for students to have a way to connect on campus and, and hopefully to come and make some friends and to feel um, like they have a place to go on Thursday and Friday nights. So this is a participant that came through Unites that said, the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement gave me a way to meet other people with shared interests along with make memories that will last a lifetime. It always gave me something to do on nights rather than sitting alone in my room doing nothing. They are always so upbeat and happy and it is overall just a great community of people coming together and enjoying time at Clemson. My freshman year would not have been nearly as enjoyable had it not been for the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement. And then my last quote here comes from um, an annual program we've done at Clemson now for about 15 years called our Women in Leadership Conference. Um, it occurs every spring semester, um, really usually the first weekend in March. And a participant from that program said, it made me realize that I have a lot more to offer the world than I'm able to realize. There are going to be situations where I can act as a leader and inspire others to do what they thought they could never do. So I share all these quotes to, to sort of give you a snippet or a, a picture of what we hope an engaged experience looks like at Clemson and specifically within the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement. Um, really, I, I, I walked you through that begin, belong, become. The, the begin piece, you know, looks like a lot of what your students may be going through right now. So ready, set, roar, preparing for welcome week, preparing to, preparing to transition to campus. Um, we hope that when they come to campus, they will find ways to be involved and that they will engage in what we consider quality involvement, because we know that quality involvement leads to a higher GPA, it leads to students feeling more happy and satisfied on their campus. Um, it's a huge contributor to career development and career readiness. Um, and that really we find that students who are involved who find a place to feel like they really connect and, um, you know, feel like that student did in the first quote of Clemson being their second home, um, that they really will thrive um, when they get here. Now, I think what's important to note is that I, I've used this phrase quality involvement. And what we mean by that is quality over quantity, um, that meaningful involvement is, is important. It's not just about encouraging your student to get involved in everything on campus, although a lot of our first year students will in fact do that and that's okay. Um, but we'll help them hopefully to find those meaningful involvement opportunities for them. Um, that quality involvement is really about leadership growth. It's about finding the things that they can significantly sort of contribute to and be impacted by um, versus what we would consider quantity involvement of sort of just doing it to be on the resume, right? Joining 20 organizations, not really going to those meetings, not really meaningfully connecting, not finding their place, um, but telling you I'm doing a thousand things on campus. Um, and, and we want to make sure that we're balancing that with students finding ways that they can find meaningful involvement. 
So I wanted to talk to you quickly about a couple of the ways they might do that in the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement. So the first one that I would really, really recommend is our Place Finder inventory. It's an inventory that we developed in the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement. It is located in, in orientation modules, or they can find it just at bit.ly backslash backslash place finder, excuse me, um, but it is a matching system for students to find ways to be involved. So um, if you're familiar with BuzzFeed quizzes, it's kind of a similar style to that where they're kind of selecting a couple of things and it gives them an output, right? So they're selecting their top values, the things they might've been involved with in high school, why they came to Clemson, what they're most excited about, um, a series of questions. And then at the end of the inventory, it outputs for them. Here's some recommendations of ways that you might wanna get involved. Here's student organizations that might be good for you, campus departments, and it gives them the contact information for those places. So a really, really easy way for for students to find involvement opportunities. Um, the second thing is Tiger Prowl, which I did already mention, that will take place this year on Tuesday, August the 23rd in Memorial Stadium. Um, I have 11 to three on there, to be honest, that might not be 100% correct on that. So I don't know that I have the, the final times on that, but it will occur on that day. Sometimes it's in the afternoon, sometimes it's in the morning, depending on the welcome week schedule, um, but your student will get plenty of information about that. Um, but that is our organization fair, great way for students to come and just learn about a lot of organizations at one time. And then Tiger Quest is our online um, organization platform. So students sometimes are a little overwhelmed, fairly so, by Tiger Prowl. I'm overwhelmed by Tiger Prowl and I've been for like 10 years and it still kind of overwhelms me. So I can understand why it's overwhelming for students at times. So Tiger Quest is a little bit more of a um, maybe more accessible opportunity for students to learn about the student organizations that we have on campus has every single student organization on there. They can go through and read about their events, find out who their officers are, um, and, and kind of in a little bit more of a passive way, learn about some of our organizations on campus. I also wanted to highlight just a few of our leadership learning opportunities. I mentioned that I serve as the Director of Leadership Education and Development, so this is obviously a little biased on my part, but I think these are some wonderful programs that we have in our center, ways for students to really capitalize on that leadership growth that our center is trying to move students toward. Um, so the first one on here is the Certified Student Leader Program. That is a cohort-based program that students can participate in um, during any semester there at Clemson. I would strongly recommend it during the first year if possible. Um, but they participate for one semester in a cohort, cover a lot of leadership topics, good way to sort of jump in and learn leadership, learn about their leadership style, and hopefully that serves as a springboard for them to lead in other places on campus. Our Engage Leadership Program um, is a little bit more short term. It's a four weeks that students come through and we focus in on a specific leadership topic for four weeks and they get a chance to talk about that, to learn from experts, um, to engage with some material um, and learn a little bit about a specific leadership topic. And then I've already mentioned our Women in Leadership Conference, a great opportunity for students as well. I think I would be remiss if I didn't also mention the community engagement pieces that our center does. Um, part of our work is about connecting students into our local community. They're here for four years. We want that to be um, a time for them to make a positive impact on our local community. So they can do that through a lot of things, um, but I'm highlighting two here for you. One is days of service. Um, so we do a fall in day of service in the fall semester. We also do one for the MLK holiday in January. Um, and Tigers serve our Saturday days of service that we do um, throughout the year, and students can go dedicate a single day of service or a single Saturday to a day of service in our local community. Um, our alternative break program is a little bit more time intensive. Students would utilize a break, so that may be fall break, maybe spring break, could be winter break, sometimes we will do summer even. Um, but students go and they spend that break doing service in another community and learning about a social issue. So learning about something. Um, so we've done things around food insecurity or um, homelessness, and we've sent students out to explore that issue in another community and to do direct service to address those. So those are things that um, are also great opportunities for students to learn about themselves, learn a little bit more about their leadership, but also to be able to make a positive impact in either our local Clemson community or in surrounding communities in the Southeast. And that's it for me. So I will pass it to my friend, Dr. Gary Weiser. Thanks, Kate. Uh, good evening again, everybody. I'm really excited to talk with you about Fraternity Story Life and the opportunities to join our community. Okay. 
next slide, Kate. So I want to start off with, a, with an overview of our membership. So last fall, we had just under 5,800 students who were active members of our fraternities and sororities across 48 chapters. Uh, we've grown a lot so much in the last five academic years, almost 30% membership growth. Uh, right around the time of our uh, second national championship back in 2016. Um, so uh, we're really proud of our, our overall membership. We make up about 26% of the undergraduate population. Um, and of those, 55% uh, of those are from out of state. We get a lot of questions uh, from families about, you know, if we're not from South Carolina, are we going to have a hard time being able to join? And that's not true because a lot of our um, of our chapters come from uh, members coming from all across the country. So uh, as long as your, your students keep an open mind about the organizations that they would like to join, they're going to have a really good chance of being able to find their place in our Greek community. And of the, uh, uh, the undergraduate students, 36% uh, of, our, of our undergraduate women are in sororities and 17% of our men are in fraternities. We have four governing councils uh, that are part of our, um, of our department. Uh, we do not work with any of the professional or service co-ed uh, fraternities and sororities. The historically social organizations and culturally based uh, organizations are part of fraternity and sorority life. So our College Panhellenic Association uh, has 13 organizations. They average 333 uh, women. Uh, they, are, they have a, if you hear about the recruitment process, that is Panhellenic right there. And same thing with the Interfraternity Council with Rush. Uh, that is more associated with, with IFC. And there's 22 fraternities uh, in that council with an average of 79 um, men. Our Multicultural Greek uh, Council has uh, historically Latino, Asian, and general multicultural fraternities and sororities, average about 12 uh, members. In our National Panhellenic Council, uh, we have eight of the nine national historically African-American fraternities and sororities. They average 14. And while we talk about historical foundings and, and cultural identities, all of our fraternities and sororities are open to every student, no matter what cultural background that they, um, that they identify with. Let's we'll start talking about uh, how to join. So in the College Panhellenic Association, the recruitment process is going to be uh, starting on uh, August the 17th. So your students have until August the 1st uh, at 11.59 uh, p.m. to register. And it does cost $175 to participate in recruitment. It is very important that before you can apply, you have to have your transcript and a short video uh, ready to upload at the same time. So the system does not allow you to, to start, save, and then come back later. You need to have it all ready. Um, and that August 1st deadline is a firm deadline that we need to uh, pay attention to. So they will move in on the 17th and we will go up until the, the day before classes with bid day. So all the, the recruitment process happens before classes begins and they will be able to balance walk and week activities as well. Moving on to the Interfraternity Council, a registration is currently open uh, now until August the 28th, and it costs $50 to go through the IFC rush process. Um, the recruitment week will, uh, will be uh, starting on September the 3rd, that is the Saturday before Labor Day, and then we will take a break on Labor Day uh, evening, so students who are going to the, the Clemson football game in Atlanta will have the opp opportunity to do that. And they will pick back up with the, with the invitational rounds and then bid day on September the 9th. The fall rush is our largest, but we also have a spring rush. So if your student does not feel like that they are ready to go through, uh, you know, the first semester that they are here, that is perfectly fine. You know your students best and what they can handle. Uh, so we just want you to know that there are times where you can join an IFC organization uh, whenever they, they feel most comfortable. Our Multicultural Greek Council uh, organizations, they do not have a, a council-based recruitment process where all the organizations recruit at the same time. They will hold an intake process as a chapter basis, usually one time per academic year, whether the fall or the spring. Uh, so they'll need to be on the lookout for, um, for flyers, uh, social media posts about interest meetings. Uh, but we do want to, uh, to highlight that our MGC fraternities and authorities will be attending the uh, Tiger Prowl, Grill and Greet events, and they're going to host uh, a Meet the MGC on August the 30th. And similar to the MGC, our NPHC organizations also host intake as individual organizations, usually one time per year. It is important to, to take note that anybody who wants to go uh, through an NPHC intake process will need to attend the NPHC orientation at least one time uh, in their academic career prior to going through intake. Our fall uh, orientation will be on September the 4th, and then NPHC is going to host a social event 
uh, for interested students uh, doing a game night on September the 11th. I want to highlight our academic achievements. So last fall, all of our fraternities and sororities averaged a 3.83, I'm sorry, 3.384 GPA with, um, with 81.25% uh, of our, uh, our chapters uh, being over 3.0 and then almost 79% uh, being over 3.0. So it's a very important um, foundation and, and value of our organizations. And so know that, um, that to maintain their membership, they're going to have to be able to keep a certain GPA uh, as well. We're very proud of our graduation and retention rates. Uh, our, our rates are higher than the overall Clemson uh, retention graduation rates and then the unaffiliated rates. We don't say that because you join a fraternity or sorority that you are, you're automatically going to graduate or return for your second, uh, second year. Um, at higher just because of that, but uh, being able to find that community uh, and build that, uh, you know, that sense of belonging uh, early on does, does help students feel, um, feel like that they have a place here. So whether it's in a fraternity or sorority or any other student organization, we really want students to get involved, uh, but just want to highlight our retention graduation there. And we're also really excited to, to announce in this last academic year, our fraternities and sororities reported over $1 million in uh, money raised for their local and national philanthropies and served over 100,000 hours uh, for their, um, for their um, organizations as well. So just uh, really proud of their involvement in the community, their overall grades, um, and just their performance, especially in the last academic year. We get a lot of questions about cost. So here you can see that uh, usually for most of the councils that the first semester is the most expensive because uh, they do have one-time fees that go to their national organizations for um, initiation. Uh, and then subsequent semesters, it will be uh, um, a cheaper uh, due structure. Uh, we do wanna highlight that compared to our peers in like the ACC and SEC, uh, that our membership is more accessible and the dues are cheaper than other schools. And we attribute that to having uh, a different housing structure um, than our, our peer schools. Uh, so it is a very reasonable uh, price to be able to, to be a member of our community. We also wanna highlight that there is a uh, fraternity school life fee that is added to the tuition bills each semester that they are membership. Um, and that covers the cost of our staffing and programmatic resources that we offer to the entire Greek community. I briefly mentioned housing. Uh, we do have an on-campus residence hall model that 22 of our current organizations are able to, uh, to have uh, halls either in the Fraternity Sorority Quad, which is right by the soccer field, or in the Bryan Mall, which is closer to the Hendricks Student Center. So all of our uh, organizations in the College Panhellenic Association have uh, residence hall requirements. Um, and then right now, 10 in our Fraternity Council organizations uh, are in the quad. So it's important to ask about uh, what the residency requirements are if they join an organization that does have a residence hall space. More than likely, uh, if they join one of these 22 organizations, they should expect during their second year of membership that they will um, that they'll be expected to live on the hall. And those uh, those contracts will go out uh, late fall to early spring window uh, because we do compete with the off campus um, apartment complexes who start to uh, to recruit people for for leases almost as soon as they step foot in the fall semester. So just be aware of that, that residence requirement if they join any of these 22 organizations. Next, we do wanna highlight that if you are interested in learning more about student organization conduct, you can visit the Office of Community Ethical uh, Standards website uh, to access the Tucker Hips Transparency Act. And we also link that report to the Fraternity and Sorority Life website. Uh, you can go to clemsongreeklife.com and click on uh, conduct reports. And you can see any organizations that if they have any current uh, suspension or, um, or disciplinary probation uh, statuses that we, we publicly post that there. And then you can see the conduct history there. But I am proud to say in the last academic year, we had zero uh, organizational conduct violations. Uh, so our, you know, our, our groups, like I said, are performing well and uh, really proud of their, of their success. Finally, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us. There's our phone number, uh, easy email to remember, greek at clemson.edu. Uh, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, you can find us at ClemsonFSL. Uh, if you would like to also learn more information about chapter profiles uh, or the directly linking to each council, you can go to our Fraternity Sir Life webpage and click on FSL Virtual Orientation for more information about the councils and individual chapters. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Rebecca from the Gantt Center.
Thank you, Gary. Um, all right, so again, my name is Rebecca Harkless and I serve as the director of the Gantt Multicultural Center and I'm excited to share with you about who we are. Um, next slide, please. So um, what is our mission? What, what do we do at the Gantt Center? So we are committed to creating diverse learning environments that enhance intercultural competency for our students. Um, we support and advocate for the needs of all students. Um, and we challenge students to think critically about this, themselves and their communities. We provide engaging experiential learning opportunities and we empower students to be positive change agents. So we are a multicultural center, but we serve all students on campus. Um, we are about building an inclusive uh, Clemson family. And so our mission is to support all students. Um, and we'll talk about how we do that um, in the next slide. And so how do we reach this mission? So we kind of break it down into four different areas. Um, we provide advocacy and support. And so in our physical space, we have a student lounge um, and we have multiple student lounge spaces across campus. So one is in our physical space and then another is in another building, but we have a multicultural lounge that is attached to our space. And then we have an LGBTQ lounge that is in Serene. Um, and so um, we provide that as a space for students to hang out, to build community, to come and do homework, to take a nap, what, to, find, to find their people um, and have place. And we welcome students to come and visit our offices and engage with us. And so that's a way that we can know what's happening with students um, and advocate on their behalf and support them as they matriculate through Clemson. The other way that we reach our mission is we facilitate opportunities to develop skills. So we do a lot of programming within our office and it is for students, but we also um, support students in planning those programs. Um, and so we support students who lead uh, planning committees. And if you are interested in like planning programs or you want a leadership opportunity, this is a way for you to learn skills of like planning programs, budgeting, time management, things like that, and coalition building because you'll be working with a lot of folks across campus. Um, we also host trainings and workshops to help uh, develop skills in allyship and cultural understanding. And so we want all of our students to graduate and be more culturally competent, more uh, to have more cultural humility. And so we facilitate those opportunities. We work with student organizations, but we also um, do, I think this might be in another slide, I might be speaking too ahead, but too ahead of myself, but I don't know. But as an incoming student, you take the CU 1000 course and within the CU 1000 course, there is a community dialogue component. And those students um, in that course, I mean, in that community dialogue, you get to talk about what is community? What does the Clemson community look like? How is it related to my identity? Um, and how can I be a better ally? And so those conversations are uh, led by students that are student leaders within our office. And so it is an opportunity for students to be trained in dialogue and to be uh, trained to talk about different, different things and build more inclusive communities. And so that is an opportunity that um, you can have to develop those further skills. Another thing that we do is encourage identity development, understanding and awareness. We celebrate every single cultural um, awareness month. So we will start in the fall with Hispanic Latinx Heritage Month, and then we will go to, um, we will go to uh, all the way until April, which is Asian Pacific Islander uh, Desi Awareness Month. And so we are going from, Every identity um, from September to, August, to April, we will be celebrating different heritage months. And so that is a great opportunity for us to celebrate the diversity that exists at Clemson and learn more about one another. And then we also hold dialogue programs um, to encourage interpersonal discussions and understanding. We want you to leave Clemson knowing more about yourself as well as your community. And so we host different dialogue programs um, to do that, to so just really delve into like who you are and how you became this great person that is now at Clemson. Um, and then we also have student organizations in our office. 
Um, and so we advise um, student organizations, we have an opportunity for you to get involved with student organizations. Tiger Prowl is the big um, student organization fair, but then we, two days later, will host uh, Grill and Greet. And so it's an opportunity for you to come and meet some of these organizations on this list, like CODA, the Black Student Union, the Sexuality and uh, Gender Alliance, and many of the other multicultural organizations, if you are interested in identity-based organizations or cause-based organizations, this uh, come out uh, on August 25th and we will have Grill and Greet and that's an opportunity for you to get involved in those student organizations. So some of our signature programs and events, we have our LGBTQ plus ally training. And so that is an opportunity to learn more about the LGBTQ Q community and how to be an ally. Um, we also, again, we celebrate our heritage awareness um, month. We have our dialogue programs. We have our donning of the kente, and that is a graduation celebration. It is really amazing. We want to celebrate all of our multicultural students and our students that have uh, a effectively work towards a more inclusive community at Clemson. And so we celebrate them with our Dunn of the Kente program. And then we have our MLK celebration um, in January. And so that is a week long event. We have um, cultural exploration initiatives. So we, now that COVID is simmering down, uh, we are excited to get back to exploring our cultural exploration initiatives and taking some um, service trips. And then we also, um, in the spring, have International Festival, which is an amazing opportunity to explore different cultural foods and music and traditions all at Clemson. Um, so it's out on Bowman Field. It's a huge celebration. Um, and this photo here is from um, International Festival. So it's just a way for us to, to, to be able to celebrate uh, the international community that exists here. And so we want to see you in Ghent and how do you get involved and how do you see yourself in Ghent? So one way you can do that is you can join a student organization. Like I said, we advise some student organizations in our space and even those student organizations student organizations that we don't advise, um, we work with a lot of student organizations. So sometimes we just partner with them. Um, we send out emails. So you, every student will get, get an email with us uh, from us that is like bi-weekly newsletter so that you can be involved in the stuff that we are planning. So if you see that we are planning something for a Women's Celebration Month and you want to be on the planning committee, we invite you to come and be on the planning committee for that. We also want you to know about our programs. Um, and so come and attend our programs. Our programs are welcome and open for anybody to come and attend. Um, visit the lounges. We love to have students in our space. We love for you to come and hang out. Whether it's doing homework or taking a nap, we welcome you to come and be in our space. And then also, we just want you to continue to dialogue. Like I said, in CU 1000, you will take uh, the community dialogue course. And that is just a one hour dialogue, but we encourage you to continue to have those conversations. Um, and if you would like to be a peer dialogue facilitator after you complete your community dialogue, there, there will be an opportunity for you to apply for that. So these are the ways that we want to see you um, participate and be a part of the Gantt Multicultural Center. And so that is all I have. We are located um, in Brackett's uh, Hall, uh, Suite 300. And so we are on the third floor. If you are interested in more information, this is our website. If you cannot, um, if you can't stop by, you can give us a call, send us an email. And also you can follow us on Instagram. I meant to add that to this slide, but it didn't make it, but it's very easy. If you uh, have an Instagram, just follow us at CU Gant. Um, and we would love to see you in the fall. We'd love to have you as a part of our program. So thank you. And I will pass it to Robert. All right, thanks so much, Rebecca. Uh, excited to talk to all of you guys tonight about campus recreation. Uh, 
And I would assume many folks, when they think about campus recreation, they think about lifting in the gym or competing in flag football or some other competitive sport. And we definitely do that uh, kind of stuff. But I think a, a common thread that you've heard throughout all of these different opportunities uh, is, is a way to build community. Um, and I think the variety of different recreational uh, activities and offerings that we provide uh, really provides a way for for students to to build community through recreation. So um, the way I'm going to talk about that tonight is kind of talking through uh, our different rec facility spaces first um, and kind of describing what is in each of those facility spaces um, and then the programs that go along with um, those facility spaces and even take place outside of those facility spaces and off campus. Um, so to start with, uh, I think it's also important to mention that um, as a full-time student, um, you are a member of Campus Recreation already um, through paying the Campus Rec fee. Um, so a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk about is, is included in that, your access to our different facilities. There are some areas, whether it be a, a class of some sort, a trip, um, that there are maybe some additional fees, uh, but I'll try to hit on those as we as we go through. So the first um, kind of rec center, uh, Fike Recreation Center is, is our main rec center, which is located right in the center of campus, right by the football stadium. Um, and just to highlight here, uh, we do want to remind students that it is, we do have uh, access control at each uh, rec center, and so they'll need to bring along either their mobile credentials or uh, I don't think there's really physical credentials anymore, but if they do have that, um, bring that along too to access those areas. Um, and you can see any of these facility uh, floor plans and get tours on, on our website, which I'll share here at the end as well. Um, and then kind of bringing your own, own gear is what we like to say. So things like if you need a, a towel when you're working out, um, water bottles, a yoga mat, those types of things, make sure you bring those along with you. All right. So the Swan Fitness Center um, is in Fike, um, and it's kind of our, our fitness floor right as you walk in. Um, has a variety of pin select equipment and free weight equipment, um, as well as cardio equipment all throughout that uh, kind of center atrium area. And then uh, this is also where our swimming pool is located. Um, so you'll find an eight lane lap pool uh, if you're into swimming laps. Um, and then there's also a sauna and steam room that's located on the pool deck uh, of, of the McHugh Natatorium. Uh, there's also a climbing wall that's located in the back corner of Fike Recreation Center. Um, it's about 35 feet tall, has about 10 different climbing routes, a mix of both bouldering and top rope climbing. Um, and if you are unfamiliar with it, we do offer ballet clinic, clinics, learn to climb clinics, um, and even, even some theme nights uh, throughout um, the semester uh, and provide all the equipment that you would need. So you don't need to come with anything, basically show up and we'll, we'll introduce you to, to climbing. Um, another really popular uh, fitness uh, kind of trend is functional training. Um, so we've developed a functional training zone within Fike, um, which has a variety of functional training equipment um, for, that, for that activity. And then along with functional training, another really popular activity that's kind of blown up in the last couple of years. If, if you're familiar with any of the other kind of boutique fitness things that are going on around the country, like Orange Theory, um, F45 is kind of our version of that. And there are some F45 communities, but uh, are in the community, but we have one within the rec center. Um, it is an additional membership, um, but that's uh, it's really reasonable. Uh, it's $50 per semester. Um, for students, and that, that gives you access to, you know, 50 or 60 classes uh, per week um, to choose from to come in and do, do F45, and those run from early morning to evening and, and a few over the weekends as well. Uh, within FIKE, we also have um, UPTSM, which is our University of Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine uh, facility. Uh, so if you, you know, are in need um, of sports medicine, want to get an injury assessment, if you've been playing one of maybe one of our club sports or intramurals, um, definitely stop by and, and check those folks out. All right, so that was Fike. Uh, moving on to Douthit Hills Fitness Center. Um, so Douthit uh, is, is one of our newer fitness centers uh, located over in the Douthit community. Um, it's actually located on the second floor of the hub building um, over in Douthit. 
Uh, I think if we flip to the next one, we'll have some photos of the interior. Yeah, so second floor of the hub. Another interesting fact about Douthat is it is students only. Um, so sometimes it can be a little less crowded uh, during certain times of the day. Um, but it's kind of like a mini fike without the pool and climbing wall and, and those types of things. Um, so a variety of cardio equipment in there with some really awesome views looking out over kind of the Highway 93 corridor over to the president's house. Um, and then also has some other kind of unique areas with uh, some pin select equipment, some free weight equipment, um, another small functional training zone, and then two fitness uh, studios. And our, our newer cycling studio is in there, which is, is really cool. It has all the black lights and really cool sound um, if you're into to cycling and spin. And then the Snow Family Outdoor Fitness and Wellness Complex, um, I think one of the most unique properties on a college campus um, is, is located uh, just to the west of campus. So if you're, if you're leaving campus, kind of headed towards Seneca, you cross over Highway um, 93 over the bridge there over Lake Hartwell. Um, so it's about a mile from, um, from Fike. Uh, and it's a 35-acre piece of property, which uh, is, is lakefront. It has a beach area um, where you can go hang out, picnic, um, it has sports fields. So a lot of our intramural programs, club sports happen out on this site. Um, just a, a really cool place to go, relax. There's Wi-Fi in, in Andes, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, so you want a different place to study um, and kind of disconnect from the, the chaos that might be going on in the classroom. Um, great way to do that. And then the Andy Qualabom Outdoor Education Center um, is one of our, is our newest uh, rec center um, and is, is home to the Clemson Outdoor Recreation and Education Program. Uh, but again, right there on the shores of Lake Hartwell at the snow complex. Um, and if we flip, I'll talk about CORE here. So CORE, which I mentioned is, is located there in Andes. Um, offers a variety of different outdoor equipment rentals. Um, so some of the most popular ones, as you can imagine, being on the lake, uh, canoes and kayaks are really popular. Um, and those are actually free for day use. So if students come out just for the afternoon, want to go out for a short paddle for maybe an hour or two on Lake Hartwell, um, they can check those out for free. Uh, if they want to take them away for the weekend, um, there's kind of a fee associated there. And then the, uh, again, all the other types of equipment, whether it's mountain bikes, um, tents, stoves, camping equipment, uh, climbing equipment, you name it, uh, all, all the different types of human powered outdoor recreation, uh, we, we pretty much have equipment to serve those needs. So really good options there. Um, and then we also run trips uh, through the core program as well. So a lot of those happen uh, over the weekends, whether that's a day trip to some of the local uh, rivers or trails or camping areas. Um, or multi-day trips, um, uh, and those happen over the breaks, uh, you know, spring break, winter break. Um, we go as far, and I think the next slide shows some of our extended breaks, break trips. Um, as far as, as out west to some of the popular mountain biking areas like Moab, Utah, ski areas like Steamboat Springs, Colorado, um, and has, have even done some international trips down in the Caribbean to the island of, of Dominica. So lots of, of cool opportunities for trips. Um, and this is one of those areas where there are uh, additional fees that come into play depending on the trip, but we try to keep those you know, as, as you know, affordable as possible um, to basically just cover those trip, trip costs. Our group fitness class uh, classes are, are really popular and those occur mainly in Douthat Hills or in Fike, um, but we do have a few classes that happen out at Andes as well. A um, hundred plus classes that happen per week, everything from strength, cardio classes, mind body classes, again, you name it, uh, there's, there's probably a fitness class for it. Um, those are, again, included in um, the campus rec fee, so you just need to register for those in advance. Um, we do have a, a sign up process online 23 hours ahead of time to make sure you can get in those classes. Uh, intramural sports also really popular with Clemson students. Uh, so we offer, uh, you know, different sports seasons. So some of our big ones, flag football, soccer, basketball, volleyball. Uh, but then we'll also offer tournaments and some of the, you know, just newer things like spike ball, 
um, that may happen in a tournament over a weekend um, or in that fashion. And there's men's, women's, and co-rec leagues that are that are out there. Some are more uh, kind of more competitive than others, so we offer kind of the more competitive and less less competitive leagues as well. And then club sports, um, kind of the way I describe that, that's the kind of the next level of competition above intramurals. So with intramurals, you're competing with other students on Clemson's campus. With clubs, you are competing with students from other universities. So those teams usually travel. Um, there's 33 different uh, club sports teams that you can find on our website. Um, and, and I will note that additional fees may apply to join those teams, just depending on what team or what club that is. Different ways to find information. So obviously our website, uh, but also social media is a big way that we communicate things. So you can see there um, kind of our Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram, all the different modes of, of social media that we use to, to communicate things. And I think that may be it. So I'll turn it back over to Kate. Thanks, Robert. Well, that is all of our content for this evening, um, but I want to remind folks that the question and answer um, field should be open there on your toolbar. So if there are questions about things that we have mentioned this evening, um, we're going to go through a couple things here at the end of the presentation. But while we're doing that, if you have any questions you'd like to enter, please feel free to do so so that we can get those answered for you. Um, so I did want to just make note here about our um, Clemson Parent and Family Experience Portal. Um, that portal is our communication platform that we use to provide information to parents and families. So if you have not checked out that portal, please do. It's very easy to access. The, the web um, address is there for you. I encourage you to check that out to get more information. Um, great resources, um, tons of good information in terms of um, announcements, calendars, things like that that are going on, um, things about what's going on on campus so you can stay in the loop. Um, I also wanted to just, one, thank you for attending today, and two, to remind you that a recording of this will be available within the next week. Um, if there are questions that you have that have not gotten answered, I do see we have one coming into our Q&A here. Um, so we'll get that answered here in just a second. Um, but if you have additional questions, see you families at clemson.edu is a, a great way to access us to ask those questions. Um, and also wanted to go ahead and announce that we do have um, an additional or some more Tiger Talks coming up this summer. So our next one um, will be, that date is not right. I, clearly since that date has passed July 2nd, uh, but we do have one coming up, another Tiger Talk. Um, I think it's supposed to say July 22nd, um, and that's at 5 p.m. That will be with our Clemson Family Advisory Board, so um, great opportunity to talk with them a little bit about um, what their experience has been as families and what their student experience has looked like, so I really encourage you, again, that's July the 22nd, apologize for that typo on the slide there, July the 22nd at 5 p.m., um, and I think that is all that we have. I'm seeing a few more um, questions, let's see, in the chat. If they have other things you would like to share, please feel free to throw those into the Q&A. Um, Robert, it looks like I got a question in the chat about if students have registered for the freshman core adventure camp, um, will they receive, when will they receive more info about that? Hopefully I'm reading that question correctly. Perfect. Actually, Robert, I think the way that came through, they might not be able to see your answer. Do you mind to unmute and just share that? Sorry. Yes, sorry about that. Yes, we will be sending out information about Explore Adventure if that's, I think that's what they're referring to with the Freshman Corps uh, program uh, very soon, yes. Awesome, thank you so much. If there are additional questions, please feel free to throw those into the chat. We'll stick on for a minute or put them in the Q&A and we can answer them there for everyone to see. If not, that is all we have for you this evening. So thank you so much for attending this evening and um, we look forward to having you and your students on campus soon. Thank you for being here.